What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video and welcome to the Keep It Techie channel where we dive into the world of Linux and help you get your tech skills up to speed. And today we're taking a closer look at the latest and greatest from Canonical and that's Ubuntu Linux Server Edition 24.04 LTS. And this release is packed with updates and features that are sure to excite developers and system admins alike. So whether you're planning to upgrade your server or or setting up a new one stick around as we explore what this new version has to offer let's get to it all right so i'm at ubuntu.com and this is where you can get that latest version of ubuntu whether it's the desktop or the server edition. And Ubuntu 24.04, also known as Noble Numbat, is stepping up the game with groundbreaking performance enhancements and development tools. And if we head over to their blog post, and this is the official release notes. So if you click here, and I'll, I'll have these links down in the description of the video, but this goes through the release notes of it. But just to break it down in the video as quick as possible, first off, the version comes with Linux kernel 6.8, bringing you improved system calls and nested KVM support, which is a big deal for those using virtualization on IBM power systems. Now let's talk about something every performance engineer will appreciate, which is that frame pointers are now enabled by default across all 64-bit architectures. So this means you can get more precise and comprehensive profiling capability, making it easier to optimize and troubleshoot your systems. Now imagine having clearer frame graphs at your fingertips without any extra setup that's definitely going to save you a ton of time now collaborations have also been a highlight of this release and that and canonical has teamed up with intel to integrate intel quick assist technology which enhances encryption and compression tasks which significantly frees up your cpu to handle other critical operations and this partner is also about boosting your server's efficiency and handling of network and storage performance. Now developers, you're in for a treat too. Updated tool chains including Python 3.12, Ruby 3.2, and PHP 8.3, and also Go 1.22, along with Stellar Net 8 support ensuring seamless application upgrades. And for you Java folks out there, OpenJDK 21 is now the default, providing cutting edge features while supporting older versions for broad compatibility. Lastly, Ubuntu isn't just focusing on performance and development. It's also enhancing security and management tools, ensuring that Ubuntu servers remain a top choice for your production environments. And with these tools and features, Ubuntu 24.04 LTS is setting a new standard for enterprise server operating systems. So now that we covered all the cool updates, let's go back over and show you guys how to get Ubuntu right fast, Ubuntu server edition. So if we close this out, so right up here at the top, it says get Ubuntu, click there, and there is the desktop version and then the server version. So you wanna click on server and get Ubuntu server. And I just wanna show you guys, go down and click here. There are some alternate downloads if you wanna check it out for different architectures and all that stuff so if you're using like a raspberry pi or something like that there is an image for you and they also have this option for instant vms and automated provisioning but i like to do the manual installation so that's what i'll do i'll show you guys that right fast but one cool thing that i wanted to point out as well they have extended you know support but this is only under ubuntu pro so if you guys want to check that out you can i definitely recommend you check this out if you're running a business using ubuntu as the server either that store data or whatever services that you're running on the Ubuntu server. A Ubuntu Pro will be a benefit because they will extend the support for a very long time. So let's go down and hop over and get our hands dirty by going through the install of Ubuntu 24.04. Before we move forward, I wanted to give a quick shout out to CIQ, the official partner of Rocky Linux. Rocky Linux is a Linux distribution that is intended to be a downstream complete binary compatible release using the Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system source code. The project is led by Gregory Kurtzer, who was the founder of the CentOS project. 
So check out Rocky Linux at CIQ.co. All right, first off, I want to apologize how fuzzy it is. It'll get a little better once we get further into the installation. I just want to show you guys what will pop up soon as you boot up the ISO. It'll basically bring up try or install Ubuntu. And then there's also a memory test in there. So we're going to do the try and install. And this will go right into the installer. And you'll see it when it comes up. All right. And like I said, not much has changed in the installer itself. It's still like text based. And I kind of broke down how to navigate through this. You basically use the up and down left right arrows or whatever in order to select stuff and then just press enter and that will select whatever you have also the tab and i'll point out when i'm actually using a particular key to do certain things but what i'm doing right now is already set on english all i have to do is press enter and that will take us to the next step so let me go down and press enter boom and then this is our keyboard layout and if you need to make changes all you have to do is tab tab back up to the top go through and change your layout if you need to change the variation if you need to and then there's also the identify keyboard and then down to done press enter that'll take us to the next step now you got two different options of the installation you'll see the ubuntu server which is a default and it comes with a whole bunch of packages that are curated by canonical to set up like a normal experience of ubuntu server and the other option is a minimize so if you need a server that just has a very small footprint then you can use that minimalized server version where it kind of scales down the packages that are installed it's still a legit version of the server you can run services it's just a scaled down version without all the extra fluff and i know that's something people used to talk about you know a while back about certain operating systems like ubuntu where they come with a lot of bloat well that will solve that issue for you if you're trying to not have so much bloat on there that it could affect your packages or your services that you're running on the server and free up resources for that so same concept up and down arrow you can go up there and select that minimalize if you want to you can use the up. i totally forgot about that but yeah you can use the up and down arrow that'll take you up and down i know i tell you tab just like in linux anywhere else there's multiple ways of doing things so that works as well let's go on and press enter and this will automatically connect to the network get us a ip address that way it could download all the updates as well that's one cool thing i saw when i installed this couple days like on release day when when i finally was able to get the is because it was timing out for me for a minute just trying to get it i was having a tough time getting it man but once you get it installed fully you'll see that you don't have to run any updates because it goes through an update through the process installation process so let's go down press done got our ip you can set up your proxy address and like i said most of this hasn't changed bro now this is the mirror test it's basically going to go through and set up the proper mirrors for you like the closest servers in order to get the packages for you so you want to let this run it actually won't let you go until it actually runs it's basically trying to narrow down your location and the closest location to a hub so to speak where you can get the packages that you need for your system all right the next thing is our hard drive setup storage setup storage configuration whatever you want to call it you can use the entire disk you can also it automatically selects lvm so it'll create lvm groups for you and you know lvms are good especially if you add drives or you want to increase the space of a particular area then lvms are good for that purpose it's basically a logical volume and then also we got encryption with the lvm group with lux and that lux is the program that runs the encryption and then if you select that it will open it up where you can put your passphrase down at the bottom you also have your custom storage layout you can select that if you want to let's go on hit done there and then here is our summary so basically breaks down everything or actually this is our storage configuration since we did the guided and let you want to do what it do with the hard drive it just gives you a breakdown of it and i believe this is the last step it's going to show us a Oh yeah, our account. So you definitely want to set this up. So just set up your, your name and your user account and it already has pseudo privileges and all that good stuff. And actually I skipped this step. Actually, let's go back up here because that's the server name. So you want to name your server, whatever you want to name it. I'm gonna just name it UBS24 and then our user account. So I'm gonna name that the same as my name and then our password. So let's go through, type in a password. 
twice and then we are done and i actually accidentally hit tab but let's go on and hit done and then also yeah i forgot they threw this in there as well so if you want to sign up for ubuntu pro you can enable it right here before it installs the operating system so let's go on and hit continue oh yeah ssh so we definitely want that so we can connect to our server remotely so if you're installing this on like a i don't know a virtual machine somewhere and you don't really have access to it you want to open up those ssh ports and then also if you got keys it's suggested that you install those keys or import those keys that way you can log into it a little bit more secure so let's go and hit done there and then you also have an option to set up services on here and this is all featured snap packages that you can install on the server so micro k eights that's similar to kubernetes or kubernetes for workstation and applications docker all that powershell so microsoft powershell wormhole and i won't go through them all but like cloud connection clients like aws client the google cloud client that allows you to connect to their platform and i actually use that google cloud as hey on my main system to connect to my cloud servers on google's platform but anyway you can select whatever you need there and then let's move on and it should be it should be in yeah and that was one thing i forgot to say is it automatically stores installing the operating system so it'll look as though it kind of completed fast but it was actually running in the background as well so i'll be back when this finishes you'll see it'll pop up and say reboot now and i'll let you know the installation is complete it'll also say installation complete but i'll be back when that finishes all right and like i said it will say installation complete so if you look up here at the top that is the installation of ubuntu 24.04 so all we got to do is tab down here to reboot now and that'll reboot and we'll have our system up and going and i'll be back when it comes up all right so we are back into our server this is what you'll be greeted with and i know it's kind of intimidating for new people that are looking at servers or ubuntu servers for the first time or linux servers in general but the first first line right here is just basically icing you to log in so and i'm gonna walk you guys through the you know the base level stuff so just type in your account we know what our account is from when we did the installation press enter then type in our password that we set during the installation and that is our main kind of like administrator account for me as a person now but by, by default ubuntu disables the root account and that's why you have to use sudo and as you can see right here it says to run a command as administrator user roots use the sudo and then the command and then you can also see the man page for sudo underscore root that'll give you more details on how to use that it's not that difficult and as you can see there are no updates in i know i said this earlier like it was a big surprise but it's it's not really when a new release has happened it normally takes a little while for them to start kicking out updates you'll start seeing updates as the time goes you'll see when you install so it doesn't have all the updates a lot of times they try to compact as much as they can within those isos and there might be some updates but they'll only happen once you get the server up you'll start seeing updates come through especially as the iso ages and that's pretty much all i wanted to cover with the server i'm not going to go into any of the services this is something i want to do in the in the future kind of i kind of go through like a series each time one of these new releases or long-term supported releases happen so i'll cover more of the setup in the future all right and so that wraps up my overview of you linux server edition 24.04 lts and as you can see canonical continues to push the envelope making ubuntu not just a versatile platform but a front runner in innovation for servers across the globe so like i said earlier if you're a developer systems admin or somewhere in between ubuntu 24.04 has something to help you step up your game now if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the keep the techie channel for more linux tips and tech tutorials and stay tuned like i said earlier every time a lts version of ubuntu server comes out i do a deep dive into setting up different services like ssh fail to ban security web servers database database servers and like samba servers and i'll be releasing like a series of videos covering each of these topics on ubuntu 22.04 so you won't want to miss that and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you won't miss out on any of my new content and also if you have any questions or want to share your experiences with ubuntu 24.04 go on and drop a comment down below i love to hear from you until next time keep it tech